In this tutorial, we'll explore all the different panels you can load in the main window. You can use the Chapters feature on YouTube to jump directly to the section where each panel is explained. By default, the main window is split into three panels. The right panel, which always displays the score. The left panel, which shows the map at the bottom, and another panel on top. You can resize any of these panels by dragging the dividing lines between them. Choose which tool to load on the top left panel here. If you select Score, the app will display the score in the top panel and the map below it, completely removing the right panel. This is the only option that eliminates the right panel entirely. If, for example, you select the global controller, the score will automatically reappear in the right panel. This behavior is consistent with any other panel you choose. You can load an additional panel below the maps panel with this list here, or choose No Panel to remove it. The global controller provides quick access to the most frequently used buttons in the app. Think of it as shortcuts to essential tools. We've covered these buttons in detail in other tutorials, so be sure to check those out if you need a refresher on their functions and usage. The voicings keyboard shows the voicing played when you click on a chord in the map or the score. These voicings are the ones played by the current AI player. The blue note is the note that's being played by the bass. Remember that the AI players rarely include the bass note in their voicing, so the bass note is provided for context. Also, if you click on the same chord again, the voicing will often change because the AI player is trying to create movement in their accompaniment. But you can always replay the current voicing with this button without changing it. You can also browse through all the voicings that the current AI player knows for the current chord with these buttons. You can use these tools to learn how the current player would voice the entire chords in a song by clicking on each chord in the progression and sequence. The app will not show the voicings while playing. Although this might seem a good idea, it's not very useful since the chords change too fast. The scales keyboard show the chord scale that's being used for the current chord. Every chord in Mapping Tonal Harmony Pro is always paired with a scale. For example, this A flat major 7 is paired with the Ionian scale by default. So if I play it, the scales keyboard will show the A flat Ionian scale. The blue notes are the chord tones, in this case the 1, 3, 5, and major 7. And the white notes are tensions. If you want to see which tensions are available and which are avoid tensions, you can enable the tensions button here. Now when you play the chord, the keyboard will show the avoid tensions in red. You can listen to the scale with this button. So here's the E-flat 7 paired with the Mixolydian scale. As you can see, the A-flat is an avoid tension 11. You can always change the chord scale on any chord. To bring the list of available chord scales for each chord, right-click on the chord in the map. Let's change it to an E-flat 7 flat 5 paired with the altered scale. Now you can see the E-flat altered scale has no avoid tensions, since the flat 9, the sharp 9, and the flat 13 are all available tensions in a dominant chord. The guitar panel functions similarly to the keyboard panel, with one key difference. The voicings displayed are not based on the current AI player, but are instead standard guitar voicings for the selected chord. This is because many piano voicings are physically impossible to play on a guitar. When you click on a chord in the map or the score, the panel will display a possible guitar voicing for that chord. To hear the current voicing, click this button. You can browse through all available voicings for the selected chord using these buttons. The root of the chord is always highlighted in red. The history staff is like a notepad where you can view a few voicings at a time written down on a grand staff. This is really useful if you want to learn how the current AI player would voice a 251, for example. For example, if I want to see how Duke would voice this D minor 7 flat 5 to G7 flat 9 to C major 7, then I can click on the chords in order to load them into the history staff. And you can play it here. You can also turn on and off different analysis layers. and even use this jazz button to view the chords with a complete set of tensions. You can clean the panel with the trash button and try another set of chords. If you're studying harmony or writing new songs, you can use the map inspector to help you understand where things are in the map. 
you can highlight the chords in each of the three tonal regions, tonic, subdominant, and dominant, or highlight all diatonic chords in the current key, or just the major diatonic or the minor diatonic. All secondary functions, or specific secondary functions, like the secondary of the two chord and so on. This tool is really useful for beginners that are trying to find specific harmonic functions in a key. For example, what is the augmented sixth chord in the key of A flat? Well, just hover over the six augmented and you'll see it is an E7 chord. This tool will also help you learn where each function is located in the map.